A while back, I made this short little open source game called Cavern. Now, when it comes to making games, the hardest part for me is always the art. This game looks fine, but there's definitely room for improvement. That being said, there is one particular enemy in this game that I believe turned out really good looking, and that's these guys. They're little slime enemies that slug around on the ground, and if they see you, they'll puff up and then release some spike projectiles. The design is basic, but what makes this enemy so nice is its animation. Traditionally, game developers will use sprite sheets in order to implement their animations. Each frame is a different image, and the character will swap between these images really fast, which will display the animation. Now, for intricate characters with walk cycles or any complicated animations, a sprite sheet really is the best way to get an animation going. However, there is an alternative, and it works very well when you're keeping things simple. I'm referring to animating programmatically. What this means is that there is no sprite sheet at all. I code in the visual movements and animations rather than drawing each frame individually. Using the spiky slime enemy as an example, despite it having some interesting movements, animating this guy only involved creating two assets, one sprite for the body and one sprite for the eyeball. The rest came from squishing and stretching the body over time and placing the eyeball in the right spot every frame. This is all made possible by using what are called tweens. The process of tweening simply means that you're changing some value smoothly over a period of time. For instance, I could tween the radius of the circle in order to gradually change its size. In this case, we're doing a tween from its initial radius of 100 up to 250 over the course of one second. This is a really simple form of programmatic animation. If we wanted to use a sprite sheet to animate this circle growing, it would take a lot of individual images to accomplish, which would ultimately be a waste of space. Instead, we're able to do this with just code. Now here, I'm tweening the size of the circle, but we can tween literally any variable, any property of anything in the game, be it the radius or position or color or scale. What makes them even more useful is being able to change the easing. For instance, here is the same tween, but with a back-in-out easing. Same change over the same amount of time, but it's done in a different, more aesthetically pleasing way. There are a lot of easing functions to work with. A good reference on these is easings.net, which visualizes a bunch of the options. Back to the slime enemy. Animating his movement is a matter of applying a bunch of tweens to his body at different times. The movement, for example. His body is at rest, but when he wants to move, we're going to tween his X scale value up and his Y scale value down, essentially stretching him out. When we go back and forth with this motion, we get his slug-like movement in place. Then I'm just going to draw his eyeball right on top of his body every frame. Now, the eye can't just stay motionless in place like this. Rather, it needs to have a tween of its own, adjusting its Y position to correspond with the stretchy movement of the body. This way, it always looks like it's attached, almost as if the eye were a part of the body from the start. And the puff up to shoot the spikes is a very similar process. All I'm doing is tweening the scale of the body up, and then doing another quick one back down. And the result of all this is a cool looking enemy that only required two separate sprites. I use this method a lot throughout the game. There's this starfish enemy that works in a similar way. When he's about to shoot, I tween its rotation value quickly, before returning back to the idle state of slow rotation. This little touch adds a lot of life to the enemies without much extra work at all. And as I mentioned earlier, the whole game is open source, so be sure to check out the GitHub repo, which I linked in the description. I'll also link directly to the code for the spiky slime enemy, so you can check out how I coded these tweens in place. Hopefully this video will give you some ideas on how you can incorporate this method into your own games. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe. I really appreciate the support, and I'll be uploading more videos to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.